Insider Racing on the high felt and this is a preview of uh, Turpentine Insider Racing uh, coming through to you on uh, the inside track on the 12th of May 2024 proudly brought to you by uh, Betway and of course if you have any any feedback on uh, the racing you've enjoyed over the last uh, 48 hours because of course we have the derby in uh, the Eastern Cape on uh, Friday do get in touch with us via our X handle or our uh, WhatsApp number let's get straight down to business race number one is over 12 o'clock four racing welcomes you made and played its fillies and mares over the 1600 meters and before we do introduce our revered guest let's give you the betting it is the seven oxalis gold at evens 32 to 10 the one rainbow river four to one about the five the crown it is sixes and bet about those i did the betting before introducing our guest because he is going to jump straight on to the horse at the top of the boards and of course it is a mr marie very good form and let's hope that as we go into the new week that form one we know the good form is going to continue good morning at well thank you thanks for having me cecil um you said even money this favorite yes sir well, do you know what price i chalked up myself because yes. i do my own betting do you know what price i made her uh -huh. four to ten four to ten i make her four to ten shots if you can get <laughs> even money take as much as you possibly can i don't see marco van rensburg coming off the bits of yeah, I think she'll absolutely cruise in. You know, I don't know if you recall last time out, Johnny Gerodis and Clyde were working on course, and Johnny made it very clear to the viewers that this was, or this filly had a little bit of a hiccup. That's why they're bringing her back in trip, and there's a race over a mile in mind for her. Here's the race over a mile, and let me just tell you her breeding, Cecil. She's related to Bournemouth, who's a mile and a half horse. Uh, Seville Orange, who Lucky Locus used to train. A mile and a half filly so she's going to love the step up in trip and let me just tell you the horse that finished behind her can't miss next time out it's anna marie you can the the first three horses past the post in the in her later start will win races i cannot believe she's even money do you know what she will do to uh valara m mambo who beat the crown by six lengths what would you she'll do? slaughter her <laughs> This filly number one, Rainbow River. How on earth is she priced up at three to one? I don't know. She's an eight to one shot. Maybe it's the Richard Free factor. City Lights. No, Cecil, let's stop this preview here. Get the even money. Go do the banking very early on. He's the boss. He's spoken. Let's stop the preview as <laughs> of now. Go and get the even money if you can. Oxalis Gold should be much, much shorter. Thanks so much to Daryl. And I think you saw there by the body language and my body language that uh, it was something that was uh, very, 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 very um, emotional indeed. Just uh, recovering from the heat that uh, was generated in the preview uh, preceding race of oh, <laughs> Silas Gold. Let's get back uh, to uh, race number two. And I think we have another decent assault in uh, the making in uh, the form of the favorite number nine, uh, Panning Gold. That is a 22 to 10, the one Karoo Gold, five to two, five to two, the two. American Rebel, it's 11 to two and better by those. Mr. Marie, Panning Gold, what a lovely eye-catching uh, second run. It was a great run, Cecil. You know, he was detached in the early stages. Um, he was like three or four lengths behind the second last horse, the eventual winner, Legend of Arthur, who's a top horse. Yes. Very nice horse in the making. The horse that he beat, Mount Pinatubo, is going to win his races. Maybe it was a touch too yeah. far because he was, wasn't doing much in the latter stages. And maybe the, the horse, uh, I think the fourth horse, Sunset Raw, if, uh, right. Uh, I mean, Sunset was, right. Yeah. He's also a very nice horse. Maybe he was a little bit close to the pace because they did go quick. But that was a cracking effort. The only reservation is the inside track. Yeah. Because if he is going to be lagging behind a few runners on the inside track, he's really going to have to quicken up smartly in the straight. But on paper, he's certainly the horse to beat. And Olsen's horses are in good form currently. So... Panning Gold, if he reproduces a similar effort this time around, he's certainly the horse to beat. American Rebel, good improvement in his last start. Um, he just got touched off by Mastership. It actually looked like uh, the favorite was in trouble. And that was his first start, stepping up in distance. Now he gets Richard Free in the irons. Um, and he finished well clear of the balance of the field last time out. So I've gone uh, numbers nine and two. And then, obviously, number one, Karoo Gold, who comes back in trip. He's been traveling hard. Um, that may suit him. So, 9-2-1.
92 and 1. Let's confirm that that is the, the start of our bipartisan race number two on the inside track, as uh, highlighted by Mr. Marie. It is uh, Alston Zelanda said to continue what has been very, very good form and uh, much, much deserved. And hopefully, we will be hearing a lot more of the man as the season wears on and into a 24 25. That is race two of a 12 35. Okay, so it is the social media. And of course, uh, that is our X handle as well as our WhatsApp numbers. You can uh, utilize uh, to tell us what you think of uh, the current uh, batch of uh, two year olds as we are also looking forward uh, to a series which we'll discuss in a very short while a three year old series here on the High Felt. A new inception, a new idea, and it could be a great one. Race four is a pinnacle six. Race three, rather, is uh, the uh, third race on the afternoon, a novice handicap. Before we get to that pinnacle six, first leg of the pick six. In race three, uh, an interesting race, Miss Scarletta, uh, Scarlett, a surprise winner, first time out, seven to two, nine to two, about numbers of four, Mastership, and uh, the uh, six, Golden Pavilion, nine to two, eleven to two, about the three, Happy Mo. It is 15 to 2 and a better bar those. Interesting betting race, Mr. Marie. I was ahead of myself. I was going to talk about a pinnacle stakes when we've got a novice handicap. I think that is the operative phrase, a novice handicap. I'm shocked to see Miss Garletta favorite priced up at the top of the board. You know, um, she came up on the connections over a distance that she's not bred to perform well over. So she could certainly have some... Um, ability about her but uh, she's several kilograms under sufferance and there's some hard knockers over here so if you are going to be back you know i'd suggest you wait a uh, horse that i believe is overpriced is number nine marco frappe now i know the form line's not holding up cecil but i watched his last start with the blinkers for the first time and i said to myself this horse is doing too much in the running he's really gonna have to be a, a, a um, have some ability if he's going to hold on and and keep rolling and I think this inside track is going to suit him they tend to go a little bit quicker so I do see him settling and you know he's, have, he's having his peak right now and the penny could finally have dropped now for him I think um, I think they've always rated him the son of the United States so at 10 to 1 uh, you can't get hurt I think he he'll give you a good run for your money and then you have to include several others happy Mo let the side down last time out I think she's way better than that I actually think she's a nice filly mastership if any horse has had the perfect prep going into this race it is mastership uh, he's having his third run off to rest and gelding Richard in the irons he's going to go forward he showed a lot of guts last time out and by, now we'll know if American Rebel has Frank that form. Also watch out for American uh, Biscuits, Golden Pavilion. It does get tricky, but I think at the current odds, Marco Frappe at 10 to 1, some value. Thank you so, so much to Mr. Marie there. Four and a nine in that uh, first leg. It is an outlay of 384 Rand. Off time to race three, 10 past one. All right, we've got to that pinnacle stakes now and we've got to the start of the pick six. So be reminded that it is Sunday, by the way, if you're just joining us, a very warm welcome to you. Hopefully the day off it has uh, started off well. It is at uh, 1600 meters and uh, let dare we forget, it is Mother's Day. Many, 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 many happy returns to the mothers and hopefully you are going to be sport rotten. You much deserve it. You are the rock of the nation. Right, let's get to race number four, and it is the six and Lady of Power. There we go. That is well named on Mother's Day. That <laughs> is a 22 to 10. Go favorite with a seven. Scallywag. And also a 32 to 10 is a one. Bingwa. Back to form last time out, but now it's on the inside track. Fives and better bar those. Bingwa, last time out on the uh, stand side uh, track. Uh, beat East Coast easily. And of course, that was not winning out of turnover the course and distance. Yeah, um, I think uh, I think he's in great form and he's certainly waited to go close up here, second best in, so I'll give him a winning chance. One thing I want to say, Cecil, um, this race should be run at uh, a cracking pace. Mm -hmm. um, they're really going <coughs> to, excuse me, Cecil, they really are going to get on with it. Um, you've got the likes of Forever Mine, Scallywag, Twin Turbo, they all push forward. So I think the pace is going to be on and that may suit something. Mm -hmm. 
who likes to be given a chance, and Bingua is one of them. But I think the value in the race is Savannah Storm. Um, he's not badly treated over here, and he will certainly benefit from a genuine pace. So I think with 52 to shoulder, um, Apprentice Cacchetti's uh, done the business on him in the past. Uh, the race is going to be run to suit him. At 12 or 14 to 1, you certainly can't get hurt. So don't exclude him from your exotics. And then Lady of Power, the only uh, fairer sex in the race. Um, Mother's Day, maybe you are onto something of yes, Cecil, but there have been a few equipment changes. The blinkers come off and the tongue tie gets refitted uh, with 50 kilograms to shoulder. Um, she has to be taken seriously over here. So um, I'm going to be leaning towards number five as the value, Savannah Storm. Yes, let's have a look at uh, the uh, selections there. That is the pick six. And I'm just uh, looking here at uh, what a difference a couple of years makes. I have the Prophet and uh, Lady of Power were all the rage as uh, three-year-olds. And uh, Lady of Power seems to have rediscovered the form. I have the Prophet not as of yet, but not to be written off. That's pick six time. Race four, 13.45. I'm not even going to remind you of that uh, handle because it is at the bottom of uh, the screen. Do get in touch. It is uh, really, really picking up the season. And uh, we're looking forward to being part of it here on the high field and uh, elsewhere. Now, race five is the Phillies of S86. It's over the 1,800 meters. And in a race number five, a place in the sun from a red-hot stable is at a 7 to 2. Number four, special charm is at 9 to 2, 7 to 1 about the 10, a shade with roses. 15 to 2, the three escape artists and the six, a rosy lemon. Also at 15 to 2, there's 8 to 1 and better. When I see you from my peripheral uh, peripheral vision, <laughs> look at me like that. I've made a mistake of some sort, but I don't believe so. It is a place in the sun, your favorite at uh, 7 to 2. Am I right there? <laughs> you <laughs> always correct. have a look about yeah. you. Thank what you. can we say about the daughter of Flower Ellie? She's off her uh, highest mark career mark to date so she's still improving with racing she's strengthened up nicely and she's going about it the right way cheek pieces have assisted her she's in good form yes one to take seriously um have a look at number 10 over here now mr Pedigree. i'm glad to say your stable has turned and uh this filly is actually a very nice filly i think she certainly would have benefited from some time off the track uh strengthened up one from one with a tongue tie and i must add she was in very impressive on that occasion, and she could certainly be better than her current rating of 80. Um, yeah, I mean, she has taken on some nice fillies in the past, so I'll give her a chance if she's fit and well. I am Regal. I think she will be better of a, a less testings uh, um, track here. I think, um, I think she, she's not the most consistent, but on her day, she can be she can be very competitive in this sort of um division and then mr terry recently has been saying escape artist is going to be coming back to form he's going to be coming back to form those those are were his words in the track talks yeah. interview and yeah you and can he's see, it to me as well yeah and yeah you can see she's come down in the ratings to an 81 she's very fit and she gets Stronger handling from the saddle. Richard Free now takes the ride. So watch out for her. Right, so that is a race number five, the first leg of the first jackpot. It is standalone a Sunday, and uh, certainly is a wonderful uh, card put together. It is uh, not the biggest of fields, as we've seen in recent times. But uh, what we like in quantity, we certainly have in quality and uh, competitiveness. Now, as far as favoritism is concerned, we've got the highly regarded number one, DeMarco's Jet at 22 to 10, the three Crimson Forests, 9 to 2, 11 to 2, the four Red Knot. The uh, six, uh, that is the Damuva, is at 11 to 2. And uh, thereafter, it is uh, sixes and uh, better bar those. DeMarco's Jet, uh, it is uh, Mr. DeMarco Giannis, uh, as I said to you, and I always say to you, if I see him on course, I'll give you a call and then you can just uh, <laughs> fast dial your bookmaker. But uh, no, he loves his horse rating still. It's good to see his passion is still there. I think she's a nice filly. I, I think we certainly haven't seen her anywhere near her best. She's, she's lanky. She's going to improve with racing and time as she strengthens up and fills out that frame of hers. 
but she's going to be very competitive here as well because um, she's not uh, rated out of it. So I like her chances. The mover, nah. Uh, Joey Summers, uh, daughter of uh, Flower Alley, certainly off a very, very competitive mark. Her ratings plummeted. She's proven that she is competitive off a 61. Looks like she's ready to win again. A lot is in her favor. Muzi from a neat draw, having a peak run. Um, so she'll be right there to finish. Then um, number two, Cecil, have a look. She actually picked up a penalty behind Francis Ethel. And she only gave way late last time out behind Donamo. And that was off for 83. Blinkers go back on and she's come back down to a 76. So trifectas, <laughs> quartet inclusion number two, be real. Um, Red Knot, post made an effort was encouraging. If you want to play wider, you can include her. And the Ling Linger No More, number seven. She finished close up last time out. Um, yeah, she certainly uh, wouldn't be uh, a surprise if she featured over here. All right, so Pascal Samora, is that a pace setter or it's uh, there on merit of actually possibly trying to steal the race again from we're using those front line running tactics? Uh, Summerland could challenge her for those uh, uh, honors up front. Okay. I don't know. All right, that's uh, the first leg of the uh, second and final jackpot at uh, Turpentine and uh, first leg one, two, six, and seven. It is a lovely card, as I said, at this intro to our preview for the latest race number six. Right, last chance to get involved in a pick three, and you won't forget because this is our top line. And now this is the start of a three-year-old winter series, and I think it is a great concept. It is uh, with the Secretariat Stakes enlisted. That'll be over the 1,400, and then uh, leg two will come about on Sunday, the 9th of June, a Golia Mile. That is over the uh, mile. And then uh, it is a grade three Sea Cottage Stakes over the 1,800 that concludes and that is on Sunday, the 7th of July. So that will be quite an experience, and then the experiment, I think, uh, will be here to stay. Right, Miss Marie, we're looking at uh, race line number seven, and uh, your favorite is, and uh, rightly so, I was there for its two runs. The first run was a very decent uh, debut effort. I think it was on Grand Heritage Day. Sabre Strike is at uh, 15 uh, to 10. 11 to 2 is the 10 Longsword. Number one, Presley, 7 to 1. 15 to 2, the 6 the Warhawk Bomber. The two Platina Princess are back to winning race 12 is bracketed at 12 to 1 with your horse, and that is a Master Christmas number 8. It is 14 to 1, and a better bar those. First of all, this has got uh, all the makings. I uh, please correct me, I know you will do anyway. Of a mini uh, graded feature, grade 3 type of feature, because it is competitive, and there are some upwardly mobile types. Absolutely, yeah. Some nice horses are uh, certainly going to win their races over here, Cecil. I'm really keen to see how Max the Magician goes as he's having his first run as a gelding. I don't think he's going to be uh, if, like a... I don't think he'll be fighting at the finish today, but I'm keen to see how he goes. Um, I've played to beat him. Mm. Let's, uh, let's see, uh, Cecil. I think the value could be with number three over here, Emporium. Um, you know, course and distance, his form's cracking. Yeah. And he's got a neat draw. What price is he? Well, uh, we're talking about uh, the, the, the three. That is as big as 16 to 1. And I think if you talk about ideal, sorry to interrupt, ideal prep, you're talking about uh, Atticus Finch earlier on. I think this one is uh, the ideal yeah. prepper. I think, um, I think at 16 to 1, he, he's going to be concerned. I think uh, he does represent some value. I like his stable companion. Uh, two miles west. So I know the form wasn't frank, but I watched the race. So this horse was traveling too hard, and there was a horse that fell to corner, and that left him exposed with no cover. So one draw, 53 to shoulder. He's going to strip fitter. I think if he settles, you're going to see a big run from number 12. Two miles west. He's actually so many. I think he's seven kilograms better off with Presley. So a nice inclusion. And then the favorite, if you're a merit ratings man, you'll make number seven, Sabre Strike, a racing certainty. You know what? He was out at the weights with Barbaresco. He was out with the weights, at the weights with the Africa House, Wazact. He couldn't pick up a penalty. But if you, if you work it out, back in a handicap, he's slung in over here. So um, he should be the horse to beat, but I don't think there is any value about him. So 
I played a little bit wider. All right, 3-7-12, I see absence of eight Master of Christmas. A step too far at this moment, Mr. Murray? Master of Christmas? No, I think in a handicap, he, he certainly has to go in if you are playing wide, Cecil, but my perms are quite cross. Thank you so much. Let's look ahead to that uh, seventh race, first in a new series. Quality racing continues with our penultimate, a last chance to get involved in a double at a Turpin. Tina, there is our contact details once again. It is Virex or a WhatsApp, if uh, whichever one uh, tickles your fancy. But another competitive heat, uh, the last leg of the first uh, jackpot, and it is a Vixa Princess. Hasn't won for a little while. Had uh, notched up the, those uh, two wins on the trot. But there's been a second, a third, and a second. And uh, this afternoon, I will be at a 33 to 10. I say this afternoon, we're recording for Sunday. And that is 33 to 10. Number six, uh, Alabama Anna is at 7 to 2. 9 to 2 about numbers one, Good Queen Bess. And Stable Companion, the five, Woman of Power. Just be lacquer. Is that a big price? 13 to 2. We'll hear from the man next to me. Just be lacquer. 13 to 2. Or is that just about right? So I'm going against the grain over here. I'm playing to beat most at the top of the boards. Um, Fixed Princess, listen, she's in great form, but look at what she's picked up for running places only. Um, her last win was of her. Uh, she got pumped up to, bumped up to a 91. She's now a 98 from having placed three times. So she's steadily gone up in the ratings. It's not going to make it easy for her. Have a look at Cape Lights. Now, she's held on the sea and enemy form, but she was badly drawn on that occasion. She's five kilograms better off with Vix Princess. The stable has come to form, Robbie Sage, and Gavin will make use of her this time around from a neat draw. He'll put her in the race early on. I think she's going to very, go very close to reversing that form with Vix Princess, and in my mind, she's the value in the race at 7 to 1, Cape Lights. Then, don't discount the chances of number seven, Rani of Katio. Mm. This filly is better than her recent form. She's had two come on runs about her. I had a look at the replay last time out of a thousand meters on the inside track. She was run off her feet. She only found her feet very late in the race on that occasion. And if it was an extra 450 meters, which she contests over now, she would have she would have been a factor. So 52 to shoulder from a knee draw having a peak run. She now steps up in trip and she's unexposed over this distance. She won with a lot in hand on debut over the 1160. So who says a good couple of months later she can't go the 1450. She's very well related. I think she's a sister to Maharani. So I'm going Cape Lights ahead of Rani of Couture. And then, obviously, the foremost fixed princess. Thank you so, so much. And that is, again, a passion the plea there. Do not ignore numbers four and the seven. You do so at your own peril. That's race number eight. All right, as we end off uh, Mother's Day with uh, the running of race number nine, yes, we know that the man has uh, spoken about uh, Gavin Arena, and uh, that was in the preceding race. And, of course, uh, Gavin, he's having a whale of a time at the ball. I think he had the first of three on uh, the afternoon, David Nevenazen, while his uh, exploits with Sandringham Summit are well exploited or well, well, well documented. Right, it is uh, David Nevenazen and uh, Gavin teaming up with uh, Seuta. And that is uh, the favorite, the four, at 19 to 10. 9 to 2 about numbers of 9, Sahara Dawn, and the 11 across the uh, pond. Number 7, Courageous, 6 to 1, it is 17 to 2, and uh, better bar those. Right, the draw is at 10. That's obviously of uh, concern, but uh, you do often speak of how Gavin can overcome these uh, draws. In uh, race number 9, can he do that? Absolutely, he can. Uh, she's a nice filly. Uh, she's done very little wrong to date. Um, some obstacles in the way here in that she comes back in distance. Mm. I don't know if that's a positive or a negative. And she's got a tricky draw to, to contend with. Um, so for that reason, I don't think there is much value about her current price. Uh -huh. um, let's have a look. 19 to 10. And the form line hasn't really lit Held up. Held up, yeah. It was mm. a weak field that she disposed of last time out, but she did it very convincingly. Cecil? Uh, the 11 is the two-year-old in the race. Um, she's making her handicap debut across the pond. Not a bad post-maiden run. 
Um, Jeff's got 52 to shoulder from a neat draw. Uh, she now steps up in distance. Um, I can see her featuring. Uh, I think number five here, Regal Daughter. Um, now I know she's probably looking for further, but she's going to be racing fresh because she is returning from a layoff. And I don't think we've seen the best of her yet. Um, I think uh, I think she's better than her, her form on what she's shown to date. So I like the look of her. And then Alpha Betty, now here's a filly that's plummeted. Or yeah, she's still a filly. She's plummeted in the ratings. And what's interesting is they bring in her right back in distance with the blinkers on. And she's contested races much stronger than what she meets over here. So I think um, you can take a look at boxing numbers two four five and eleven trifectas and quartets and let's see if we can crack it all right so we have actually got uh, more than our mileage out of uh, mr marie for this particular preview that is at a turf in two four five and eleven and because of that i did not wish to indulge him once again in giving us the form line at two across the pond's last run which was in the nursery because uh, I think it's only an hour long that uh, the show is supposed to last. That has been the exact box that from Marie. And uh, thanks very much to Daryl. He has been in a tremendous form and long may it last. Uh, thanks to you. Happy Mother's Day once again. It is still a few hours to go. I hope you're going to go out for a wonderful evening. And uh, wherever you are, let's hope that the week ahead lies ahead uh, with uh, great fortune for you. Good afternoon.